great video for you guys and it's not from an email. It's just something that I think is going to be very useful and informational for you guys so wanted to provide it. What I want to talk about here guys is essentially just list off some of the most impactful, most effective exercises per muscle group so that as I list these, you guys can take notes, write them down, and then start to um, manipulate and, and mold your own workout plan. You know, as you know, I have my workout videos and you can definitely emulate those. But I just want to give you guys a overview of all the different workouts that we can utilize and switch up um, our workouts with. So what I'm going to do is go body part by body part, you know, the, the major body parts, and then I'm going to kind of divide them up into compound and isolation movements. If you're not familiar with the difference between the two, a compound movement is one in which utilizes multiple muscle regions, muscle groups. An example of that would be a bench press, like a barbell bench press. When you're pressing the weight, you're not just focusing on your chest, you're utilizing your triceps as well as your shoulders. So it's a compound movement using multiple muscle groups. And then you have an isolation movement. Isolation movements is the exact opposite, where it's focusing primarily on that targeted muscle region. So if we're doing chest, an example of an iso isolated movement would be like uh, the flies on the pec deck. You know, range of motion is, is set in stone. The only thing that's moving there is, is the expansion of your chest. So that's the difference between compound and iso isolation movements. You know, they're also called, you know, primary and secondary movements. Um, those secondary movements are also considered shaper movements, complementary movements. So there's words and verbiage that's utilized um, interchangeably, but I'll try and stick to compound movements and isolation movements. So let's start with chest. I know that's what you guys all care about. Um, a lot of this is going to sound really, really basic, but sometimes that's, you know, that's what works. You know, if you go to, um, what else? I don't know, I'm trying to think here. You know, if you go to, if you go to Domino's or Pizza Hut or Papa John's, what always sells? A cheese pizza, a pepperoni pizza, a sausage pizza, the basics. Every now and then they'll throw in barbecue, chicken, pizziola, ranch, you know, all these specialty pizzas and they're hot for a month or two but what always stays true is the fundamentals the basics the cheese the the pepperoni the sausage the bench press the squat the deadlift okay so I know this sounds really really basic I know I'm not gonna be describing uh, an exercise where you're standing on a, a medicine ball with one leg touching your nose and, and doing a bunch of jumping jacks it's not about that. It's all about the basics. So let me run through the list. Um, I'm going to kind of go through it quickly. And like I said, write note, take notes, write down what sticks out to you and, and utilize it. So most impactful, most effective exercises for chest. Let's start with the compound movements. Flat barbell or flat dumbbell bench press. Incline barbell bench press. Incline dumbbell bench press. Decline Barbell bench press, decline dumbbell bench press. See the pattern there? Flat chest press machine, incline chest press machine, decline press chest machine. Um, you can do dips, um, dips you know on the parallel bar, not not tricep dips, but dips up on the apparatus. Um, push ups at various. Um, um, inclines, you know, you can do decline push-ups, flat push-ups, incline push-ups, so many different variations of push-ups, jumping push-ups, clapping push-ups, one-arm push-ups if you're advanced. Um, uh, now let's talk a little bit more about the iso isolation movements. I keep wanting to say isometric, but isolation movements for chest. Talking the flies, all the flies, decline flies, flat flies, incline flies. Um, the pec deck as mentioned, cable crossovers. Um, it's very easy to incorporate your bicep when you're pulling in that cable, but don't bend like this. Keep it nice and, you know, in a locked fixed position. 
hitting the chest there. So that's chest. Remember, compound exercises are going to incorporate multiple movements. So those, those, that first half of the exercise is going to be incorporating your triceps and your shoulders. So typically when we format our workouts, we want to put those in the beginning because it's the most taxing on the body. Compound movements into the shaper list or the iso... I keep wanting to say isometric. The isolation movements. Alright, let's move on to back. We got pull-ups, chin-ups, lat pull-downs, bent over barbell rows, bent over dumbbell rows, um, T-bar rows, seated cable rows. So many different um, handles and mechanisms we can use to hit different parts of our back. Close grip, wide grip, under, you know, supinated grip. Um, so many different ways we can put tweaks and twists onto each one of these movements. We also have the, I, I don't know what the, it's kind of like a T-bar machine where your chest is on the, on a pad and you're rowing. Um, inverted rows and then barbell and dumbbell shrugs <clears throat> in the shrug machine. Um, same is true with as chest incorporate, you know, the compound chest movements incorporated triceps and shoulders. The compound back movements utilize not only your back, but a lot of your forearms and your biceps. Let's move on to shoulders. Shoulders, guys. Seated overhead barbell press, seated dumbbell press, standing barbell press, standing dumbbell press. Um, Arnold presses, both seated and standing. You can do um, standing upright rows with dumbbells or with barbells. You can do some more um, secondary movements, the shaper lifts, like dumbbell side raises, also known as lateral raises. You can do front raises with the dumbbells. You can do easy bar front raises. You can do um, bent over rear delt flies. You can hop on the pec deck and do rear flies to hit your rear delts. And <clears throat> a lot of those compound movements for the shoulder are going to hit your triceps. So a rule of thumb, guys, whenever you're pushing something, it's almost always going to be a, a movement that incorporates your chest, shoulders, and triceps. When you're doing a pulling exercise, you're going to almost always incorporate your forearms, your biceps, and your back. So keep that in mind. Let's move on to biceps now. You have standing barbell curls, standing dumbbell curls. You have um, dumb, standing or seated dumbbell curls, but with a twist. And there's so, there's so many different curls, guys. You got, you know, supinated. You have hammers. You have hammers into a twist. You can do reverse curls. There's, the sky is really the limit with, with um, bicep curls. There's so many different variations. Um, you can do concentration curls, cable curls, bicep machine curls. So many, so many. Tricep exercises, you can do dips where you are kind of on a bench, or you can do them on that um, apparatus, the dip apparatus. You can do close grip bench presses. You can do reverse grip bench presses. You can do um, skull crushers, either with dumbbells, barbell, easy bar, or even on the cable machine with the flat bar. You can do uh, overhead dumbbell presses or extensions. You can do um, cable underhand extensions, rope pull downs, V bar pull downs. Sky's the limit with the triceps as well. So um, close grip push ups, that's another really important one. Um, that's that's going to be an example of a compound tricep exercise where you're working your triceps, but you're also working the upper and inner chest. <clears throat> Let's move on to legs. Let's talk about our quads. We can do barbell or even dumbbell squats. We can do barbell or, or dumbbell front squats. We can do split squats, barbell or dumbbell lunges. And then we can do some of those isolation movements such as um, leg curls, leg extensions, um, leg kickbacks. So many different ones, guys. <clears throat> so utilize these as, as I go through them. Write them down, guys. Write them down. We got some some great some great hamstring exercises. 
um, Romanian deadlifts, barbell or dumbbell, barbell or dumbbell um, straight leg deadlifts. You can do sumo deadlifts. You can do glute ham raises. You can do hyperextensions. Um, good mornings, and as mentioned, leg curls. <clears throat> what did I? That, I think I covered all of them. Um, calves and abs. Let's talk briefly about calves and abs. Um, those are those are so. I'm trying to think. I mean, those are such isolated movements, but you can incorporate them into compound movements. For an example, if we're hitting calves, we all know we need to do calf raises to hit our calves, but we can tack it on towards the back side of a compound lift, such as squats. So you can do a squat and then come up and at the top end do a calf raise and go back down. Squat, come back up, calf raise. Squat, come back up, um, calf raise. So you can incorporate it that way. Otherwise, you can just do you know, the, st the, the standalone calf raises, single leg calf raises, toes in, toes out, neutral stance, wide stance, feet together, incline, decline, flat, all those different variations. And then with abs, man, that, that sky's the limit with abs, guys. I, and I've done a few videos on, on abs, but if you haven't caught those yet, in terms of abs, we, we want to hit all parts of the abs. Lower, upper, side, to put it into three simple categories. We want to focus on bringing our shoulders to our legs or our legs to our shoulders when working. So legs to shoulders is going to be lower abs. Shoulders to legs is going to be upper abs, generally speaking. And then twisting movements, side bends are going to work on your serratus, your intercostals, your obliques. Also that V taper, or the, the, the V cut in the front, I should say. So we want to do weighted and non-weighted ab exercises. Planks, um, barbell rollouts, dumbbell rollouts, um, weighted cable pull downs. Um, there's so many guys, there's so many leg lifts, weighted leg lifts. All of these we can put into our arsenal so that we're constantly being equipped and shocking the body with these different lifting exercises. You don't want to go in there and do the same thing over and over and over again. Yes, we do want those those fundamentals, those elementary, most basic exercises, more specifically those compound exercises, to be the foundation of almost every lift that we do. It, it's very rare to just do a full workout only of shaper lifts. It, it just doesn't happen. A majority of the time we want to have these compound lifts, these cheese, pepperoni, sausage pizzas at the core of our workout, okay? Make sure you're incorporating the squat, the bench press, the deadlift, the, the pull-ups. Doing these on a consistent basis is going to get you whatever physique you want. That is the foundation, whether you're trying to cut, trying to build strength, trying to build mass, trying to look aesthetic. These need to be at the core of every single one of your um, workout programs. You don't, that doesn't mean you have to do flat barbell bench press every time. Maybe it's incline one week, flat the next week, decline the next week. But utilize these exercises, create your own blueprint, and go out there and start to transform, guys. Have fun. It, it builds up, you know, that puts a lot of ex excitement into your workout routines. You're not doing the same thing over and over again. You have an arsenal of different weapons that you can go to. When you're getting bored or you're feeling unenthusiastic and no longer excited to go to the gym, utilize this list and you guys will have fun and continue to grow and continue to progress. So guys, thanks for watching. I know it's short. I know I went through it quickly, but you know, rewind, hit pause, whatever you need to do to make sure you get that list down. Utilize it, incorporate it, adjust it. See the results, guys. I'm out. Thanks for watching.